Okay, so that was movement forward, and of course I can do that same backwards by subtracting from the x-coordinate or up and down by working with the y-coordinate. But before we do that, let's instead look at the second dimension of movement rather than location. Let's set lo look. Let's look at rotation. So I can do things like set rotation. Um, and I can do the same trick as before. I get my current rotation um, and then I just add something. Uh, say I add 5 degrees to my current rotation. So uh, I compile this. I try this out and run. And we see we just rotate on the spot. So that's a fairly nice looking animation of rotation here. We can try both together. So if I change at the same time my location and my rotation, um, then I get an effect of this bug rolling across the screen. Now, um, this rolling effect may or may not be what you want, but let's say we have as our goal not to have our bug rolling across, but actually crawling across the wall, but we want it um, to crawl always in the direction it is facing. See, at the moment, um, the direction of movement is independent of the direction we are facing. So if the bug is facing um, upwards, the direction of movement is still to the side. So the next challenge is to make the movement dependent on the rotation. Um, there are various ways how you could do this. Essentially, you have to read the rotation and then do a calculation of what how that translates into x and y coordinates. The easiest way for us to do this is to uh, use a helper class because um, Greenfoot um, provides a number of helper classes that help r uh, that already implement uh, some tasks that are commonly needed for for a number of scenarios. We can look at this by going here to the Greenfoot website. Um, let me just make that window a bit smaller so that we can properly see it. So here's the Greenfoot website and if we look in the programmer section there is an entry here for support classes. If you look at support classes there's a class called Mover which is a class that adds relative move and turn methods for the actor. So here if I click on this there's a full source code of this helper class. Um, so I want to copy this class into my scenario. There's various ways how I can do this. I have here the source code of the class. I could just save that as a file and put it in, or I can just select it all and copy the text out of it, memorize the name of the class mover, and then create a class here with exactly that name, mover. That default Greenfoot image is fine because I don't actually need an image for that class. So here in this class, if I open this, I just select it all and delete this and then paste the text that I had copied here from the web page. I can close the web page again. So here is my class mover copied of my web page. Um, if I compile this, that is fine. Now the trick is that the mover class here um, serves as a super class for my bug. So I modify my bug to not extend the actor class but instead extend the mover class and now I get a structure like this and now I have the mover methods available in bug. So here we can get rid of the code we have written and instead just write move which is one of the methods inherited from the mover class. If I just write move into my bug class here and I put the bug in there and I run it, it just steps forward so it moves forward. That is, fi that is fine. Um, let's find out what other methods we have available. I can do that by looking at the mover class and then going here to the documentation of that class which shows me just the names of the methods. So I have here a move with and without a parameter about how, fast, uh, how far I want to move. I can say how far I want to move or I can move by a fixed default amount forward which I've just done. I've got similarly two turn methods. I can turn with or without an angle and I can check whether I have hit the edge of the screen. So now the interesting bit about this move method, both of those, is that it will move in the direction that we're facing. So if I now say things like um, I want to move and then turn a little bit, let's say uh, three degrees, um, and I compile this, 
and put the bug into my world, then I am actually now properly moving in a circle. Um, I can also say I want to move and if I hit the edge of the world. Remember there was the add world edge message that we have just seen um, that checks whether I'm at the edge of the world. Um, and then I want to um, turn a bit. Um, the effect of this would be that I now have a bug that moves straight forward until it hits the edge of the world and then um, it turns around and if I put a few of those in they all nicely crawl around on my wall now. Um, or the last thing I can do um, is I can make the turn um, dependent on my keyboard. So if I say uh, Greenfoot is key down um, and then I name the key, let's say if the right key is down, that is the right arrow key of my cursor keys, then I turn five degrees and I just duplicate this and I say if the left key, that's oops, left arrow key is down, then I turn minus five degrees. Um, this way now, if I compile this, put the bug in there, I can make it move. And if I press now my keyboard keys here, I can cause this bug to move right or left controlled with my keyboard. So here you have the basics of actor movement basic actor movement we have done first, then actor movement that reacts to the edge of the screen, and the last thing we have done, actor movement based on keyboard control. These are the basics of actor movement. Uh, thank you for listening. That's it for today. Bye-bye.